Phil Lynette was the underboss of the Philadelphia crime family until he became a government witness. He broke the code of La Costa Nostra and testified against the mob. For more than a decade, he had been in hiding with his family. Now in a new book, Mafia Prince, Leonetti reveals for the very first time what it was like to be the youngest underboss of a mob family. He writes about violating the secret oath of mob secrecy, becoming one of the highest ranking mafia turncoats in history. Our senior correspondent John Miller spoke to Leonetti in an interview you will see first on CBS This Morning. And John Miller, only you. <laughs> well, good morning. Only you. <laughs> you know, only you can talk to the mafia. That's right. I studied Phil Leonetti for so many years. Before I sat down with him, I felt like I knew him. Uh -huh. um, but, but Phil Leonetti was different. He was young, he had movie star good looks, and he was a stone cold killer. But after his rise to the top of the Philadelphia mob, he made a decision to betray those secrets. And if you've seen The Godfather or Goodfellas or The Sopranos, you know what the fictional characters are like. But when you meet Phil Leonetti, you understand the real world of the mob. Never did nothing ruthless besides, well, I would kill people, but that's our life. That's what we do. What did you like best about being a gangster? I like the respect that I received from everybody in our family. Because I had a, quite a reputation, you know, from being taught by my uncle the rules of the mob. You know, hey, he taught me how to kill people. Hey, Nicky! How about a few words? He was the nephew of Nicodemo Little Nicky Scarfo, the mob boss who controlled rackets from Philadelphia to Atlantic City. Phil Leonetti was his right-hand man. They called him Crazy Phil. Did you like that name? No, I did not. But when your uncle heard that name, Nicky Scarfo, what did he think of it? I said, you know, I wanted to do something about it. He says, are you crazy? He said, uh, he said, people would pay money to have a nickname like that. Because you'd be feared? Yes. But that wasn't me. At what age, as a boy, was your first understanding that there was this thing, Cosa Nostra, the Mafia? I think I always knew, but I really understood it when I was about 10 or 11 years old. They killed a guy, and he had this truck that was stolen that he had to get rid of. So he took me with him from Atlantic City to bring it back to Philly to get chopped up. And he was telling me the story as he was driving me, why he was bringing me. He was telling you the story of the murder, and you're 10 years old. Yeah. By the age of 23, Leonetti pulled the trigger on his first mob hit. I remember the feeling I had. I felt cold and I didn't feel any remorse. I ran behind him, and I stuck the gun to it behind his head, and I fired, and I thought he was running away because the force of the gun moved him forward, you know? Uh, and then he fell down, and I emptied my gun into him. That would be the first of many murders. I've never done a murder. What does that feel like when you're doing it? Uh, I hate to say it, but it felt natural. I mean, I didn't feel anything. I just did it. I thought it was my job, and. And that was it. So, does Phil Leonetti ever think about the people he killed? No. To me, they were all bad people. I mean, they could have killed me too. I could have got killed. So, I'm not, I, I can't worry about the past. Once Leonetti had participated in mob hits, he was qualified to become a made man. He was sworn into the ranks of La Cosa Nostra in a secret ceremony in a room full of fellow mobsters. They pricked my finger, my uncle did. And they put a picture of a saint, blood. They put the blood from my finger on the picture of a saint, and he lit the saint on fire in my hands. And I cupped my hands, and he told me, don't make that saint fall out of your hands. Just keep juggling it until it burns out, which I did. And as I'm doing that, he tells me, you got to say, may I burn like this saint if I betray my friends. No, I have no comment. Please let me get by. When his uncle, little Nicky, took over as boss, Phil Leonetti was made underboss, and things began to change. He always told me, says, you got to kill people and you got to keep on killing them. That's how this thing works, La Cosa Nostra. That's how he looked at a problem. They would have to kill him not to be killed. But there was no more brotherhood. I mean, my uncle took over, and the way he was acting, it wasn't the same. It was, he was uh, breaking all the rules that he taught me to obey. And I just, I was disgusted. I, I couldn't take it anymore. Once you are in this life, there's only two ways out, jail or death. There was no retiring or quitting. I felt stuck. 
So after 10 murders, as he faced a 45-year prison sentence, Phil decided to turn and became a government witness. Your uncle, who just about raised you, yeah. put a half-million-dollar price on your head. You expected that. Yeah, it's expected. I mean, what I'm doing is going against all the rules of the cause in Austria. You know, I put myself and my family in a bad situation. That's why we're, we're careful. We've got to be careful. He was sentenced to 55 years in prison, and you served five years of a 45-year sentence after killing 10 people. Some would argue that's not justice. How do you see it? Well, it's justice for me. I mean, I'm happy I'm out of jail. I think I did a good job with my family that I'm raising. I'm not looking to be in the mob. I, I never got in trouble after I got out of prison. So I think I'm doing pretty good. I, I think I'm a, I'm a success story. So you've been reading about this guy. Finally, you meet him. So what's different? What did you learn? Well, the first thing that strikes you as you sit around and talk to Phil Leonetti is um, that he had no choice in this. I mean, his, his uncle was taking on mob hits, taking him on mob hits when he was 10 years old and explaining, well, if the cops stop me, they'll look at you and they'll say, well, the guy wouldn't be with a kid and they'll stop the next mm -hmm. truck. So he was born into this. The second thing that strikes you is what a likable yeah. person he is to, yeah, right. to sit around and talk to. Why did he do it in shadow since we can see pictures of him? Does he look drastically different? Let me, here's the test. What? Mm. I did surveillance on his house uh -huh. um, down by Atlantic City. I studied photos of him. I worked Phil, Phil Leonetti for years when I was doing the New York mob stuff. And I walked by him oh, coming okay. into right. the building where we did the interview. Okay. He said hello to me and I said hello back saying, I don't know who that guy is. So yeah, he looks different today. Are you nervous, John? Not that he was going to whack you, but are you nervous <laughs> that you want to make sure he's not ticked off? Because it seems like if he irritates people, if people irritate him, bad things happen. Did I say he was a likable guy? Yeah. I never worked that in. <laughs> All right, John. Exactly. But you know, he hasn't made no. the mistakes that others in that life have made when they go into the witness protection program of getting arrested, getting in trouble. He's kept on the straight and narrow, so he doesn't do that stuff anymore. All right, John Miller, thank you.